Sorry, I have to open up Sam. So if we uh, create a new file within Sam, this is the uh, the new Sam format. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I think it looks really great. Um, here, like for example, if we open up a photovoltaic system under PD watts, and then look to the utility market, we will see the new financial structures that are available, um, as well as the the IPP version um, that was available in the the older version of SAM. Uh, I'll open up an all equity partnership flip, take you through that. This is a system summary under the financing tab. Um, we see some of the primary information up front, the analysis period and the inflation rate. Um, and then some of the construction loans that are available. Uh, we did alter some of the default values within construction loan periods, uh, specifically related to CSP projects. So you may be getting, picking up more um, construction financing costs uh, for under the newer model. Um, here within solution mode in this box, uh, you can define the model to uh, solve either for the first year PPA price or the tax investor IRR target. Here it's sort of it's sort of the inverse of specify. So if you if you specify the first year price, you're solving for the IRR target. The, uh, the, the tax investor target. Um, and if you specify the tax investor target, then you're solving for PPA price. Um, and the model will produce results to indicate that you, in fact, did reach that IRR target and, and the results of that. I'll take you through that in a minute. So here within the equity investment for the tax investor, you can um, the default value is a 60% share of equity contribution from the tax investor and uh, the 40% from the developer. All these developer values within the blue boxes, those are outputs, and the inputs are the, the white boxes with, with, uh, with black lettering. And the pre-flip pre and post-flip allocations are as uh, defined there. Again, you can you can change any of those inputs for those are the default values for um, under the model. You can see that uh, the IRR target is 8.5% with a target year return of, of uh, year 8. Again, as I mentioned, that, that target year will have a, a significant impact on your LCOE. Um, in this next set of boxes, developer capital recovery, you can define, as I mentioned, the um, the, under this, this structure, the developer often will pull out cash to get recovery of his initial capital, and that can be defined as a, a time-specified um, recovery of his capital or just full re capital recovery in year one. Um, there's also an opportunity to put a specific development fee in there for sort of the sweat equity that a developer will go through. Um, equity closing costs really refers to uh, how the tax investor, uh, the due diligence that may be required by the tax investor to, to close on the equity investment. Um, and here you see um, that the working capital reserve account is, is generally set at six months of operating costs. Just below, we define depreciation and an opportunity for bonus depreciation. Um, I'm not going to take you through that too closely. And then there's uh, a reserve account that can be specified for um, for replacement costs of inverters, what have you. Um, so if we run the model as it is, you can see we're coming up with a first year PPA price of 34 cents per KWH. Um, under these, uh, under the structure and, and these inputs, I'm going to go ahead and change that that target year 
for the, the tax investor return. Just so you can see the impact of that to uh, to a 10-year structure and run the model there. And we see that the model came down significantly to to 23 cents. So it's it is highly um, sensitive to that input because. Uh, Getting that all that ca all that cash to the tax investor in those first eight years is um, a large hurdle to um, to to meet within a project structure. So so uh, sort of alleviating that by spreading out those payments can can have a large large impact on reducing your LCOE or, or your, the PPA price that you want to offer a utility, for example. Um, if we go and try up a new structure, uh, first of all, it's important to know that the default values are uh, associated with this structure. We'll copy over if you just hit select technology and market and switch and switch uh, structures that you will pick up the old default values, something that I wasn't aware of for uh, a short while and caused some confusion. So if you want to really try a new um, a new structure with the new default values, it's important to, um, to start a, a new case, create case, and then we can we can pick up a new technology and a new financial structure. So let's try a CSP project um, and again go to the utility market and uh, go to a leverage partnership flip structure. Again, we'll go to the financing tab. Um, and again, the, the uh, primary inputs up front shouldn't really change case to case. I mean, with the new technology, of course, it will change, but um, the analysis period and the inflation rate are specific, are uh, generic to the model. Um, again, we have the solution mode. You can specify first your PPA price or tax investor target. And then, um, as you can see, the, the allocations of um, equity contributions and pre-flip and post-flip cash and tax uh, benefit allocations are, are unique to this structure. Um, but the most important aspect is that you pick up the debt terms here, the all-in interest rate and the tenor. Um, and the closing costs and a fee that might be associated with the, uh, the, the acquisition of debt. I think, um, I'm not sure if, if this is new actually to this, this year's model. Might be. Um, the, and here you apply a debt service coverage ratio and the model will figure out based on that debt service coverage ratio what the maximum amount of debt is that you can you can acquire to to meet this project's um, based on this project's cash flow. Um, also, the debt service reserve account that's that's a new feature that um, banks will look for when when providing debt. They're going to want some some reserve of the debt service to make sure that all payments can be made. So, if we look and run the model based on these inputs. Slowly today. Slower to the webinar. Oh, it's it slower to the webinar. Okay. Right, because we're we're hooked up to my meetings. Okay, so uh, here we can see that. And then, oh, I didn't go through the results very carefully last time, but um, here it shows that there's an IRR target year of eight, and the IRR target was 10.5 percent, and then the IRR actual year and tar actual target year. Were, were what was specified. We did accomplish our 10.5% return in year eight as um, as the input was requested by the of the user. So that, that's what those uh, rows mean in the table. Um, the first set of rows are the annual energy and the and the uh, 
first year PPA price, nominal and real LCOE. And down below, uh, we're seeing how much, what the debt fraction was. So we're, the model solved for an optimal level of debt at 48% of the, the total project costs. Um, then here you can see the, the direct cost of the project, uh, as well as the financing costs and the indirect. And uh, in total, that's the total project costs. Now, if we go back, um, and again, change that IR target year to 10, just to see the impact of that, if that changes the debt fraction. It didn't really change the debt fraction, but it, it did have a large impact on the LCOE. So that is uh, something to look for in setting your projects. Um, but that is probably a very sticky point with the tax investor. So um, I think all those points need to be carefully um, considered and uh, up to primarily up to negotiations between the parties and very specific to um, the individual risks of the project. If we pick up uh, a new case, we'll look at a wind system. Again, go to the utility market, it's only utility scale winds here. And we'll look at a sale leaseback structure. Um, again, we'll go to the financing page. Um, and here you can see that there's specific inputs specific, uh, related to a sale leaseback structure. In a sale leaseback, there's often a developer operating margin, which is sort of built into the cash flows as a separate item. Um, and we're trying to get good feedback here on what that needs to be. Um, we're looking at you know, what the appropriate default values uh, a little more carefully now as, as we have a little more time going back to the investment and development communities to figure out exactly what that needs to be. But uh, the current default value is, is $40 per KW. Um, and for example, we, we change that to 20. Um, I look at an IR target year of eight, IR target percent of eight and a half percent. Um, we will get an LCOE. This is a win, win project, of course, so completely different, but um, a first year PPA price of uh, close to 14 cents per KWH and a, a nominal LCOE of 15 cents. Also within the sale leaseback structure, um, the escalation of that operating margin and um, the, uh, the lease payment reserve that may be required by, uh, by the lessor, um, it's something that's frequently found in sale leaseback structures, but not, not always. So again, every structure might be slightly different. And then if we look at the – so go back to – we am going to pick up a geothermal system. Again, look at the utility market, and we'll look at a single owner, which is obviously a more uh, straightforward structure. I think it, to the extent companies have the tax appetite to utilize a single owner structure, that it can be an advantage for them. Uh, bringing in a tax investor often increases costs um, with related to due diligence, and um, there is often uh, a sizable loss of the tax benefits uh, by bringing in that, that third party. So if we look at 
the single owner structure, it, it's set up in a similar way where we're specifying the tax investor IRR target really means uh, the single owner, the, the, the same entity. Um, as you can see that there's no, um, there's no allocation of equity investment or cash and tax benefits between different owners. So when, when they refer to specify the tax investor IRR target, they, they do mean that, that one entity. Uh, and again, here you can uh, specify if project level debt is available. Um, and incorporate that into your project financial structure. Again, the, um, the bonus depreciation is something that's currently available at 100% um, at the federal level. Um, and the ITC is also, uh, the default value is, is currently set at the five-year makers. We, we find that um, in our discussions with experts in the field that the ITC is really specific to capital that falls into the five-year makers category, um, which is generally over 90%, um, but not necessarily 100% of the project costs. So some, something to keep in mind when looking at that, those, those benefits. Here, we'll run the model. Again, the output is, is very similar to the other technologies we're looking at plant output and the, um, the uh, first year PPA price and, and LCOE. There, there, there is an IRR target here, year here and target, but it's, it's specific to the, again, the single owner, not the tax investor. And that is essentially what I wanted to cover today.